Good morning, church. It's nice to have you here with us this morning. This Advent season, we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, what we're doing is each Sunday of Advent, we are celebrating Christmas, but we're doing it in a very different way. The first Sunday, we, studied, we uh, had a celebration of Christmas through the eyes of the angels. Today, we are celebrating Christmas in a German or Austrian style. So it'll be a little bit different than what you're used to, but I hope it'll be informative and also inspiring for you. As we gather together, I would remind you to please look over your, your uh, bulletin, your announcements. And as we do so, I would uh, remind us of several different things. Kathy gets the slides. There, no, right there, it's good. There's some other ones after the welcome, babe. But what we are doing... Oh, well, go on to the slides, please. Yeah. Yes, I'm ready, babe. I'm sure. We are packing lunches for the homeless on December, Thursday, December 21st at 10 a.m. What we need in preparation for that is that we would love to have uh, cases of uh, small packages of applesauce. And so if you would like to provide one of those packages or two of those packages, we invite you to do so. And they can be brought next Sunday. Again, they can be placed underneath the tree. We would also like to include with those bags of lunches a pair of nice warm socks for the homeless. So if you can find a pack of warm socks that we can then separate and place one pair of socks within each bag lunch, that would be wonderful. And if you want to write a card to the homeless, telling them about the love of Jesus Christ, uh, because you follow Jesus Christ, you also love them, however you want to say it, you may also include that, and we'll make sure that they're packed within the lunches. We also, you'll find within your pews, special Christmas offering envelopes. And those can be used so that we can provide for a family in need this particular season. And of course, their name in the community will go, you know, uh, we will not share that name for you for their, for their dignity. But that offering envelope, you can leave something today or next week if you'd like to. And that's to help provide for someone else. And that's our mission for this Christmas season. And so, as we do so, begin this time together, I would then have Kathy move to the first chorus, which I got us out of sync. No, my eyes are Okay, I'll give you a, I'll give you a kiss later. <laughs> so let us rise together and lift our voices. We're singing verses 1 through 3 of O Come, All Ye Faithful. Oh, come, all oh, ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and be on him, born the King of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us Adore him, oh come let us adore him, Christ the Lord, true God of true God, light from light eternal, Lord, he shines not the virgin's Sing choir. 
gather together this is one of the hymns that come from Germany that bless us during this holiday season. Let's join in our call to worship. Glory to Christ, son of Mary, born a child, you share our humanity. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, son of David, born to rule, you receive gifts from the wise. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to Christ, Son of Man, born our Savior. You are the light of the world. Glory to God in the highest. We celebrate the coming of our God with all the voices of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. For our opening prayer, we'll be singing, O Holy Child of Bethlehem, just one verse. O Holy Child of Bethlehem, descend on us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. God, please be seated. In different countries, Santa has different names, and how we bring how we bring gifts is done differently in almost every country. This morning we are celebrating Christmas using several customs from the countries of Germany and Austria, where on the night of December 5th, not Christmas Eve, as we do here in America, a man dressed as De Hilliger Nicholas goes from house to house to bring small gifts to the children. He is known as St. Nicholas. He may dress a little different from our Santa that we're accustomed to, but the clothing that the Santas wear is that of a bishop of the church. And the St. Nicholas in Germany carries a bishop's staff, not a bag. We'll tell you why in a little bit. The German Santa does not ride in a sleigh pulled by flying reindeer, but rides on a white horse. In some places today, children leave their shoes by the window or the door on the night of December 5th. They awaken the next day, December 6th, to discover small gifts and goodies stuffed into the shoes left by St. Nicholas. They don't get big presents then, only candies and other goodies. Like our American custom, the children may leave a wish list for Nicholas to pass on to the Vinachsmen, his helpers, who we in America call elves for distribution of gifts on Christmas. Christmas Eve is the most important day of the German celebration, but there's no Santa Claus coming down the chimney, no reindeer. The German Santa rides on a white horse, remember? And no waiting for Christmas morning 
Families with young children often keep the living room closed off until after dinner when the family opens the door and gathers around the Christmas tree. The Germans call the Tannenbaum to exchange gifts. In Germany, it is not Santa Claus or St. Nicholas who brings children their gifts for Christmas. In most regions, the Christkindl, which is the angel of the Christ child, or the Weihnachtsmann, Santa's helpers who bring the gifts from other family members or friends. The question is, why do Santas do all this? They are carrying on the work of an, the original Santa Claus, who is known as Father Christmas, or Chris Kringle, or other names, depending on the country. Behind all these names is a boy who actually lived about 1,700 years ago. His name was Nicholas. He lived in the country we now know as Turkey. What's that I hear? Do you hear it? Do you hear? I think I hear bells. Kids, come on up. I want to talk to you for just a moment or two. Here, sit right here so I can look at you guys and talk to you, okay? Who do I look like? Like Santa? Is it my beard? The hat. The hat. Thank you for not saying my big fat belly. <laughs> Wait a minute, you guys. <laughs> well, Santa sent me here today because he's a little bit busy right now. Because in two weeks, he's going to be delivering presents all over the world, right? So he sent me here to ask you guys a couple questions. Some of them aren't so fun. Like, have you been good? Are you helping with your brothers and sisters? Do you do good in school? Do you eat all your vegetables? I do too. Do you keep your rooms clean? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is good. You should always tell the truth. But sometimes it's okay if you tell Santa that, oh, I'm perfect. Because I want, Santa wants to bring you a lot of really nice gifts. You know, like Pastor Brian said, in other countries they celebrate Christmas a little bit differently. Um, but it's all the same spirit. And like you said, in Germany, there's a St. Nicholas. And that's who you would call Santa. They call him St. Nicholas. And there was a boy a long time ago, so long that even Pastor Brian wasn't born yet. I mean, I'm talking <laughs> years ago. And uh, his parents got really sick and they died. Sad, right? Well, he was raised by his uncle. His uncle was a monk in a monastery. It's like a church. So imagine being raised in the church, all the good things that you would learn. And Nicholas grew up to be a very kind person. And he would make things for the kids that lived around the monastery that he lived in. And pretty soon that became the Christmas tradition to give gifts to people all around the world. All thanks to a little boy named Nicholas. <coughs> now, what do you think? Do you think we could be a little bit like Nicholas? Be giving, be kind, be nice to everyone? Santa would love that. And you know who else would love that? God would love that. And Santa wanted to remind me one more thing. He said, as much as I love these children, he said, God loves them even more. <coughs> so we got some activities for you upstairs today. So we want you to go up and have some fun. But always keep in mind, especially this time of the year, be kind, be good, be helpful, and love everyone. Okay? All right, thanks. You got a hug for Santa's helper? Come up here and give me a little hug. <laughs> yeah. Get in here. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much. Take a candy cane with you. Go upstairs. And there's also a clipboard with some pictures that you can color that describe the story of Nicholas. And wait a minute, you guys. Do you guys all have a friend at home? Can you do me a favor? Can you take one of these and give it to your friend? And tell them that Santa loves them too? All right. Thanks, kids.
This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine for Jesus, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine for Jesus. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine for Jesus. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. The story of St. Nicholas is one that's very involved. The little boy who grew up in a monastery wanting to become a priest himself in doing so. But you know, to be a monk and to be a priest, you cannot own property. And when his parents died, they were very wealthy. There were merchants. And so all of a sudden, he had all this great wealth, and he couldn't keep it to himself. At that time, the Roman government was in rule, and Christians were often persecuted. And so as a priest, he decided he would take his wealth and give it away to the people, the children particularly who were hungry. Oftentimes the gift, while there might be little treats that they would normally never have, there would also be things that they needed, and he had dropped them. He would then either put them at the front of the door of their house, or if there was an open window, and oftentimes the windows were open because they didn't have windows like what we have today, he would find an open window, and he would drop a little bag of those treats so the kids would have them. And as the people responded to his giftedness, he knew that persecution of the church was spreading. And so Nicholas used his connections that he had had through his parents to board ships and go to other places that he might do the same and send that same message of hope in Jesus Christ to others. Years later, when he returned back to Myra, He was made a bishop. And that's why the the costume that we see Santa wearing is actually a a bishop's costume. And also, we find that on that costume there was a cross, and he carried the bishop's staff. But he did not like being acknowledged as being a saint because he was just doing what he felt that God wanted him to do to show the love for others. As John writes in 1 John, he says, whoever sees their brother and sister in need and does nothing, does not love. You may tell me you have faith by your words, but I'll show you by my deeds. And so faith without deeds is useless. It's faith and deeds together. Fame spread all over. And when Nicholas wasn't there, because he went back home to Myra, all of a sudden other Santas arose and took his place. That's how we come to this tradition. But his focus was never upon himself. It was always on Jesus Christ and the love of God. May we celebrate that, even as we celebrate that German tradition of St. Nicholas. There are other traditions that are there, and one that Santa brought up with us, it looks kind of strange to you. It's called a Christingle. And so in oftentimes our Christmas Eve services, we all hand out candles and nice little holders, and they're lit. But the problem with that is that they didn't, in Germany, use nice little holders. Instead, the children made their own. It was called the Christingle. And that's what we have before us. The Christingle originated from the Moravian church in Germany. We have Moravians today. Mennonites are oftentimes called today, and in other names. And the Mennonite church 
grew in Germany and was established in 1467. The Christingle was used in a service in Germany in 1747. The orange of the Christingle represents the world. John reminds us that Jesus was in the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. We light the first candle of, of Advent. To remind us that God sent his son into the world. You'll notice that there is a bow or a ribbon that is tied around the Christingle. And that represents the blood of Jesus, which was shed for us so that our sins may be forgiven. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Solomon chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 reads, I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. As a lily among brambles, so is my love. Think about that. Isaiah 35, verses 1 and 2 reads, The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The des desert shall rejoice and blossom like a crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. These verses serve as an inspiration for our next hymn. Lo, how a rose ere blooming. Number 216. The fruits and sweets on the four skewers represent God's gifts to us. The fruits of the earth, 
and the Four Seasons. The skewers also remind us that the greatest gift was given to us in Jesus, who was pierced for our transgressions. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. Genesis 8, verse 22. Though mentioned only briefly in Matthew, yet we find that Joseph was one who had to accept the vision that was given to his bride, Mary. And he accepted a vision of his own that he had as he slept one night, in which he envisioned an angel that told him, don't worry, all explanations of why Mary's pregnant are summed up in this truth. The child she bears is not yours, but God's son. And so you are entrusted with his care and Mary's care. Love him as your own. Love him as my own. So let us sing together. Then, Joseph, dearest, Joseph, mine. Joseph, dearest, Joseph, mine, help me cradle, child divine. God reward thee and all that's thine in paradise. So praise the mother Mary. Came among us at Christmas time, at Christmas time in Bethlehem. Let us bring him far and wide, love's diadem. Jesus, Jesus, lo, he comes and loves and saves and frees us. Gladly, dear one, lady mine, Help, I cradle this child of thine. God's own light on us both shine. Down in paradise, as praise the Mother Mary. He came among us at Christmas time, at Christmas time in Bethlehem. Let us bring him far and wide, love's diadem. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, lo, he comes and loves and saves and frees us. All shall come and power me, wise and happy their soul shall be, loving such a divinity as all we see in Jesus, Son of Mary. Came among us at Christmas time, at Christmas time in Bethlehem. Let us bring him far and wide, love's diadem. Jesus, Jesus, lo, he comes and loves and saves and frees us. The lighted candle pushed into the center of the orange represents Christ, the light of the world. He, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. John 8, verse 12. I share with you now two passages of scripture. One's from Mark chapter 10. Makes me think of 
St. Nicholas. There's a story that Jesus told. Well, actually, it was told that involved Jesus in which a rich young man, a young man, came to Jesus. And in coming to Jesus, he had questions. What must I do to make sure that I have eternal life? And he professed to Jesus that he had done all the law. He had obeyed the law. He was a good man. So he said, what else do I lack? And Jesus told him, the one thing you lack, go sell your possessions and give to the poor. At this, the young man struggled within himself because he was very wealthy. And so he walked away. But Jesus looked on with hope and love for him. So the word says. We don't know whether he returned, but Nicholas reminds me of that young man, for he had great wealth, and he was willing to give it away. So also we find then another passage is Isaiah 9, which is so very important. People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged a nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you as a people rejoice at the harvest, as soldiers rejoice when dividing the plunder. For unto us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. And he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and uplifting it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. What will cause this to happen? The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Would you join me in our next hymn? How great our joy. While by the sheep we washed at night, glad tidings brought an angel bright. How great our joy, great our joy. Joy, joy, joy. Lord in heaven on high, praise we the Lord in heaven on high. There shall be born, so he did say, in Bethlehem a child today. How great our joy, great our joy, 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 joy. the Lord in heaven on high. Praise we the Lord in heaven on high. There shall the child lie in a stall. This child shall redeem us all. How great our joy. Great our joy. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. Praise we the Lord in heaven 
heaven on high. Praise me the Lord in heaven on high. This gift of God will cherish well. That ever joy our hearts shall fill. A great our joy. Joy, joy, joy. Praise me the Lord in heaven on high. Praise me the Lord in heaven on high. Let us pray. Gracious loving God, we thank you for the many ways that you bless our lives. We can count our many blessings. We've sung that song before. And sometimes, as we find it difficult to sleep, Instead of counting sheep, as being Crosby saying, we count our many blessings. For we have been blessed in many ways. And from the acknowledgement of our blessings, we recognize the greater blessing that we have by knowing Jesus Christ. And the blessings that he produces in our life, the fruit, like on the Christingle, we bear the fruit of your goodness, your love, of your peace, of your patience, of your kindness. May we cherish that gift well. May we be as little Christs to this world around us. As we pray our thanksgiving to you, we also see a world broken, violent. We hear wars and rumors of wars. We know of children that are starving. Who are suffering in many different places. And we can look at our own children and we may be grateful for all that you provided for them and protected them from. But we pray, O oh Lord, that your peace might come upon this earth so that all children might know the love of God and the peace which your Son came to bring. We think of those now who suffer from disease, illness, who are locked into hospital rooms or nursing homes or other places. May they find reasons for joy. May we, where we can, be instruments of your joy to them. Oh Lord, we just come to you. We come to you and ask that you might hear our prayers even as we give of ourselves, that we might be a blessing to others. And I have the ushers come forward at this time to receive our gifts. <laughs>
me turn and greet your neighbor with the peace and love of Jesus Christ. time of silent prayer, I'm going to ask if my two L's would come forward and they would help me to distribute our candles that we'll need for the next part of our celebration. Let us remember Christine as she is suffering from yet a full diagnosed neurological condition and will be having then some tests from this January. On this week, she's going to have some. Very good. So we want to make sure that we pray for her and that the diagnosis will be good and that will be a simple treatment. I also ask for prayers for Deb Warney who uh, fell, and she did not have a stroke because of low blood sugar and was sliced up pretty bad from a glass cabinet, and who also is suffering from a cancer that she'll have to have surgery she had to have postponed uh, until January. There are many other concerns. They've been on our list. We've passed them around to you. I sent them around email-wise. Let us be reflecting upon the concerns that we know. Let us pray in silence. You, Lord, are the light of the world. You, Lord, are the light of our life. We praise you for who you are and for what you do within us. Without you, we would have nothing.
And so we thank you and praise you. In the prayer and name of Jesus, so we sing this prayer. Christmas Eve in the Austrian Alps, the newly constructed church of St. Nicholas of Obernoff, a Tyrold village near Salzburg, Father Joseph Moore prepared for the midnight service. He was distraught because the church organ was broken, ruining prospects for that evening's carefully planned music. But Father Joseph was about to learn that our problems are God's opportunities. That the Lord causes all things to work together for good to those who love him. It came into Father Joseph's mind to write a new song. One that could be sung organless. Hastily he wrote the words. Silent night. Holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Taking the text to his organist, Franz Gruber, he explained the situation and asked Franz to compose a simple tune. That night, on December 24th, 1818, Silent Night was sung for the first time as a duet accompanied by a guitar at the aptly named church of St. Nicholas in Obendorf. I want to tell you of another Christmas Eve that is a true story. On Christmas Eve in 1914, in the dark, muddy trenches on, western, on the Western Front of the First World War, a remarkable thing happened. It came to be called the Christmas Truce. And it remains one of the most storied and strangest moments of the Great War, or of any war in history. At about 10 p.m., a British soldier noticed a noise just 100 feet. That's how close they were. Enemies, 100 feet from one another. I listened, he recalled, away across the field, among the dark shadows beyond, I could hear the murmur of voices. Most accounts suggest the truce began with carol singing from the trenches on Christmas Eve. A beautiful moonlit night, frost on the ground, 
wide almost everywhere, as Private Albert Morin of the 2nd Queen's Regiment be called in a document later rounded up by the New York Times. First, the Germans would sing one of their carols, like, O come, all ye faithful. And then we would sing one of ours. The Germans immediately joined in singing the same hymn to be to the Latin words, Adeste Fidelis. And I thought, well, this is really a most extraordinary thing. Two nations at war, both singing the same carol. In the darkness, some of the British soldiers began to sing back. Suddenly, we heard a confused shouting from the other side. We all stopped to listen. The shout came again. The voice was from an enemy soldier speaking in English with a strong German accent. He was saying, come over here. One of the British sergeants answered, no, you come halfway. I'll come halfway. What happened next would, in the years to come, stun the world and make history. Enemy soldiers began to climb nervously out of their trenches and to meet in the barbed wire filled no man's land that separated the armies. Normally, the British and the Germans communicated across no man's land with streaking bullets, with only occasional gentlemanly allowances to collect the dead unmolested. But now there were handshakes and words of kindness. The soldiers traded songs, tobacco and wine, joined in the spontaneous holiday party in the cold night. It makes us wonder, in the midst of our war-torn world, does the gospel of Jesus Christ and do the angels till sin Glory to be in the highest peace on earth, goodwill to all. And maybe that goodwill can start with us. At midnight, not carried on for two hours, at midnight, they all joined in singing the hope of Christmas in the Austrian hymn, Silent Night. Could we stand together and let us sing Silent Night together?
our blessing that we leave you with this day is that you might find peace, joy, love, and have hope during this very tumultuous time. Because God and Jesus are the same yesterday as he was, as he is today, and will be tomorrow. And he will never leave us or forsake us. We invite you to go ahead and extinguish your candle, and then you are welcome to take your candle home with you. <laughs> kind of hard with a mask on, huh? <laughs> You're welcome to take your candle home with you, and I pray that on Christmas Eve with your families, light the candle. Offer a prayer of thanksgiving to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and pray for the peace of this world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Next week, we celebrate Latino Christmas. I hope you will join us then. <laughs>